I know the back burner better than I'd ever care to tell But I'm taking control now and leaving you in your own hell Cause I won't be the last one thought of the last one Your earliest memory um, of GRGR was the first GRGR um, there, which was Puss in Boots, but it was at Meow Mix, I believe, and a lot of people I knew were playing because it was all part of this songwriting workshop that we were all in. And, um, and it was really, really cool, and I was in between performing. Me? I wasn't drumming anymore, and I wasn't singing yet. So it actually kind of watching everybody perform their songs and everything really started me wanting to perform again. Just a little inkling, so that was the beginning of me leading towards performing. So that's my earliest memory of GRGR. I don't know if I have a favorite memory because they're all been just fun. First tour, I guess my first tour is uh, my favorite memory. That was a lot of fun. I ended Loki the Grump, uh, which was the core GRGR band. Um, the last time I played with GRGR was actually last year for the ninth anniversary. Phil from Loki the Grump is still in it. Uh, my friend Joe, who's in a band called Regular Joe, and uh, we, we got a drummer, somebody Phil knows, to play the drums. And we called ourselves I actually can't remember if we called ourselves Vampness and the Mad Dog or Mad Dog and the Vamp. I don't remember. And it had Loki the Rump songs in there, regular Joe, and a couple of new ones. So we were moving forward with that and writing writing songs. We're still writing new songs. And then um, we got a new drummer who was my coworker, but she had to leave. I mean we've had, you know, my curse through all my years has been finding drummers. Because <laughs> they all leave. And um, and after she left, and I knew like the 10th anniversary was you know coming up, so I was like, screw it, I'm going to drum again. So I haven't really, except for two months in 2003, I haven't played the drums since 1998. And um, so Phil's playing bass, I'm playing the drums, uh, Joe is playing guitar, and uh, I asked Ro, who was the second singer of Mine and Phil's first band, Mine and Phil's first band called Flowers Inside, if she would come and sing and we would do some Flowers Inside stuff, which, very incestuously, also happened to be early Loki the Grump stuff, <laughs> and we're doing some of the new songs. So it's kind of like this weird mix, and the funny thing is, I'm old Flowers Inside, and it's like, it's coming back to me, and some of it, my arms just kind of know where to go. Like, if I thought about it, I'd be like, I can't play this. But my arms know where to go. But the new stuff that I've been singing and performing for so long, no idea how to play the drums. So I have to learn them. I have to learn them or write the drums to that. And that's the most challenging part is all the new stuff. But it's cool, and it's going to be fun, and it's going to be pure chaos. But that's what's been going on. <laughs> Um, I don't think so. I think my drumming is probably the biggest surprise for everybody, including myself. Um, and I guess some old, you know, old Loki the Grump songs, which haven't been played in, in, you know, at the end of Loki the Grump, we didn't play them, so I would say that that may be a surprise for some of the early Loki the Grump fans if they're there, to hear those again. I do, um, and there are some out there. There are other ones out there. Uh, it used to be just pretty much Go Girls, uh, who was more folky or acoustic driven. Uh, girls Rock and Girls Rule did a very amazing thing, and I think um, I think there always needs to be an organization like that. Uh, but it would be really nice if more female rock bands would make an effort to help and get the name out there and get this going because the more people that are involved, the bigger it gets, the more help it can be for current female rock artists and budding female rock artists because the more female rock artists that are out there, 
the more kids are like, hey, I could do that, you know? Um, so I think there is always a need for an organization like GRGR. Where would I like to see GRGR in the next 10 years? Um, be a self-sufficient, humongo, not-for-profit, but making a profit <laughs> organization that can have employees and generate money and help female musicians and like be a real standalone major force in the industry and not have to be begging for sponsors and everything where people just want to be involved in it because it is what it is. Don't let anything stop you. But always be nice. Like, not nice as in a pushover, but nice as in don't do evil things because, you know, karma's a bitch, and it really is. Um, be, be firm, be strong, be assertive. Um, get what you need to get, do what you need to do. Don't let anybody put you down and do it with a smile on your face and always be true to yourself and be kind to others. I would love Concrete Blonde to headline GRGR. I think that would be amazing. Um, of course, Joan Jett. I mean, but that everybody, that, Joan, Joan, I mean, come on, Joan, yeah, exactly. Oh God, ideal lineup. Me, I want to headline GRGR. <laughs> um, I would say Concrete Blonde, Joan Jett. It's a weird combination. But boy, what a great show. The Muffs. <gasps> oh, let me think about this now. Yeah, Concrete Blonde, The Muffs, Joan Jett. Who else do I like? <laughs> I don't know. Who's a rocker who I you know, dig? That's all I can think of right now. <laughs> That's not a major force for GRGR. <laughs> I can only think of four bands. Three bands. Maybe. Cool.